Hi, and welcome to Getting Down to Business, a public affairs show examining economic development and business issues in Covington and Kenton County. I'm your host, Covington Business Council Executive Director, Pat Frew. And my guest today is Lee Kroom. Lee is the President and CEO of Triad, more formally known as the Tri-County Economic Development Corporation. This is the group that touts Northern Kentucky as a great place to do business. Lee, welcome to our program. Thanks, Pat. Really glad to be here today. Great. Let's, let's start off. Now, um, you came from Jobs, Ohio in Columbus, but you were born and raised in Kentucky. Tell us a little bit about that and how you ended up at Triad. Sure. So I joined Jobs, Ohio in 2013. It was really my first foray into the economic development world. Gave me the opportunity to blend together private sector with this economic development world experience. And after a six-year stint there, this opportunity to come to Triad came open last year. And it really, for me, was a, a perfect combination of my, what I learned at Jobs Ohio, as well as an opportunity to come back to my home state of, of Kentucky. And I even you know, shared in my interview process with the company that my family came to Kentucky when it was a place called Virginia. So my father's family moved here in the 1790s. So from that perspective, it's, it's good to be home. Yeah, tell us about your formative years where you grew up in Kentucky. Yeah, so born in Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents were both educators in the Kentucky public education system. So they had an opportunity after finishing college to go to Owensboro, which at that time and today is a thriving community. And so they went there and I grew up in Owensboro. After that, I went back and followed in the family footsteps of Western Kentucky. So I went there, graduated twice, had so much fun. And then, uh, and then at that point, I started to pr pursue my professional career, which took me outside of the state. Right. So I lived outside of the state for about 25 years and now have the opportunity to come home. And obviously, Jobs Ohio had a big impact in the Buckeye State. So I'm sure uh, you, know, you had a lot of great experiences that prepared you for the triad job. It really did. So when I, I was very lucky that when I joined Jobs Ohio, it was, it was really a startup company. There were about 18, 20 people that worked there, and they were looking to take an economic development company and infuse it with private sector culture, private sector ideas. And so I got to join and build out their global business development program. Uh, so it was really a, a unique opportunity for me and a, a great, great timing. So Triad has been around for 30 years. It's had a great uh, track record of success in its entirety, really. Uh, talk about the number of companies that are in your profile and the product diversity of those companies. Sure. Well, as you said, Pat, 30-year-old company, very successful through that arc, and have had the pleasure of bringing a number of different types of companies to the community. And you think about one of the really unique things that we're blessed with is the diversity of those companies. So we're able to work with aerospace companies, automotive companies, Food and flavoring companies are a very strong, unique sector here. Uh, of course, everybody knows the, the logistics sector is strong in our community as well. So, you know, when you think about who's in that space, we get to work with people like Perfetti Van Mel that make things like Mentos mm -hmm. and Tyson that makes, uh, you know, meat snacks, all the way through Saffron that's putting parts on airplanes that, uh, that go around the world. It's a really unique opportunity. Right, and, and the one thing that might have people scratching their heads of, of those different industry types that you talked about was aviation mm -hmm. and aerospace, but not only Saffron, but uh, here in Northern Kentucky, as well as throughout the state, people would be amazed at how highly North, uh, Kentucky ranks among states um, in terms of the value of that industry. So if you can talk a little bit more about that, I think it would surprise a lot of people. Yeah, people are, are surprised when we start talking about the strength of aerospace. But if you think about it, the Wright brothers invented uh, powered mm -hmm. flight not 60 miles from here. Right. And that industry grew up right here in our backyard. And so we're able to take advantage of that. Safran is a, is a strong player in that, in that space. Messier Bugatti, which is here in that space. Uh, of course, GE Aircraft Engines headquartered in, in across the river in Cincinnati, but also have facilities here. So it's a very natural outgrowth of the birth of that industry that's here, not only in northern Kentucky, but as you mentioned, Kentucky. Right. Indy Honeycomb here in Covington mm -hmm. is another big company. I, I, I was just amazed. We, we did a program about a year or so ago at the CBC, and I think at that point, Kentucky was number three in the country 
among all states in terms of the value of mm -hmm. that industry, which was kind of astonishing, but also it's been a, always been a big state for manufacturing in the auto industry, which kind of lends itself to aviation as well. So, well, you think we're able to make really high value parts that go onto those airplanes, whether it's a GE aircraft engine right. and just the, uh, the size and expense of that component or through brake and landing systems through Safran. So we're, we're, we're not making little widgets that are going onto these planes. They're very important and expensive systems. Right. Um, in the past, the makeup of Triad's board uh, has been pretty standard with the three judge executives taking turns with the leadership of that board. And you had a little bit of private business on the board, but now there's been kind of a shift in the last six months to a year in the formation of your board, taking on more of, of a, a business leader aspect along with the judge executives. Talk about that and, and the need for that. It, it was a really important um, step for the company to make to bring that private sector expertise into guiding the community. I think what, and I know we, we talk about uh, Kenton County and we're fortunate to have Judge Knockelman as our judge executive, but as a community, the three judge executives that we have today, Judge Pendry, Judge Moore, Judge Knockelman, as a community, we're really blessed to have those, those three men at the helm. I've, I've told this story many times since I've been here. The, the way that they collaborate, they talked about that when I was interviewing and when I was thinking about coming here, and I was waiting to see that prove to not be true. And every step that we've taken along this journey, they have absolutely been lockstep together. They've been partners with each other, and the strength that that gives us as a community to get things done is unbelievable. And you think about this transition that Triad made, the judge executive had always been the chair of the board, mm -hmm. really a lot of control of the organization. And when, we, when the company was restarted, if you will, a year ago, uh, they chose to give that seat up and to let a private sector person take that role for the first time. And again, you just think about how fortunate we are in that things come together. Bob Heil of KLH Engineers mm -hmm. was actually rotating off of our board when he agreed to step back on for a two-year term as our board chair. So again, he's able to lead us with that private sector expertise and, and in partnership with those judge executives. Um, it's really been a fantastic start for us. I've noticed now during this interview that you've referred to Triad as a company. Mm -hmm. Most people in our community would not call it a company, but I think that's intentional on your part. Talk about that, why you would call Triad a company versus, say, an organization. Sure. Well, we get the term agency a lot. Right. And I, I don't love the term agency because yeah. it often evokes a governmental image. And I want to make sure that people understand that we're not that there's anything wrong with government, but we're not a governmental agency. The first 20 years of my career were always in the private sector. And so mm -hmm. I think from a private, spec, a private sector mentality. And so I think of it as, as a company. We have products and we have services and we're trying to offer solutions to our clients. And we try to think of those people that we're working with as our clients and help we can serve their problem, solve their problems. So all of that starts by recognizing we are a company that's trying to do that. And I think you're also trying to convey that as a company, you think like companies do. So you try to strip away bureaucracy or things that can slow the, the pace of a company in terms of giving them the services they need to grow quickly and adapt, right? That, that's without a doubt. You know, one of the things that everybody should be talking about is moving at the speed of our clients. Uh, our clients, as they make location decisions in economic development or as they try to grow a business and entrepreneurship, they're making really risky, challenging decisions. And we've got to be able to provide them with accurate quality information to help guide them through a decision-making process and do that at a speed that meets what their business is doing. We've talked about the changes on the board and you've had really a total change in staff composition. Um, talk about that as you've taken over and um, in addition to the different faces, I'm imagining you're, you're looking at this as an opportunity to instill different uh, skill sets into your into your staff. Talk about that. Yeah, so again, we talk about the transition of the company. 30 years had been really blessed with a lot of stability. When, we, when the company pushed restart, all of that experience left us. So our most tenured employee today has been with us 13 months. So we're, a, we're, a, we're almost like we're a 30-year-old startup ourselves. Some of the things that we've done is we've hired new people. We've brought new positions in that we think are unique to the needs today. So, for example, last week we brought in Christine Russell, formerly of the city of Springdale, who will be our vice president of strategy. Mm -hmm. So a completely new position that Triad's never had before 
to address needs around workplace, uh, location, uh, how we work with our partners and things of that nature. But I would say the biggest change that we're trying to make is in terms of infusing with that private sector background in that mentality of we have clients and we need to serve those clients and help them make the best possible decision they can to grow and locate their business. Um, Northern Kentucky and greater Cincinnati boast a great climate for business. Um, some of the things cited cost of living rather low than other parts of the country. Um, are there other issues or statistics or anything information out there that might surprise people about how our area might be more competitive than other parts of the country? Sure, sure. Certainly cost of doing business is a, is a big one. Cost of doing business takes in a lot of factors. So we look at what are the cost of wages and we're very competitive in, in that regard. We look at things like what's the tax taxation structure for a community. Kentucky ranks out very strongly in that regard as well. We have some that, uh, we can talk about some of the challenges. We're, we're fortunate that in Northern Kentucky, we're a growing community, but our clients in making a, a location decision will often look at population growth as a very important metric. And we could, we could certainly rank higher in that regard, something that we'll, we'll see if we can help our community with as, as we move forward. Okay, it's time for us to take a short break. I'm excited about talking more about Triad's work here. But you're watching Getting Down to Business, and we'll be back in a moment. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. We're back with Getting Down to Business with our guest, Lee Kroom of Triad. Um, Lee, uh, your counterpart on the Cincinnati side of the river is ready. And i um, wondering how you two groups get along. Of course, from time to time, you may compete uh, for landing a company. But in what ways do you collaborate and work together? Well, there's a number of ways that we collaborate. And, we're, and again, we think about just the moment that we're in right now and how lucky and blessed we are with our opportunities. So we have a very strong relationship with Ready, former Northern Kentucky Triad. Wade Williams is a vice president over there, there now. I had the good fortune of coming up in Jobs, Ohio with Kim Lauterbach as she was coming up in Ready Cincinnati. So those relationships are strong. Mm -hmm. Brandon Simmons, who runs their projects, and I started almost at the same day at Jobs, Ohio. So there's, mm -hmm. there's good, deep personal relationships that help set a trusting foundation. So that allows us to collaborate on things such as business attraction, where we're going out and trying to recruit companies to, the, to our community. So uh, Kimberly Rossetti just joined Re uh, Ready Cincinnati when the Bengals played in London. Unfortunately, yeah. the, the game wasn't so great, <laughs> but the, uh, the business environment was. So Ready really enabled us to get into that market. We collaborate on project work. So we have a project or they have a project. We can share resources. We collaborate on both marketing and research projects, so there's a, really a lot of give and take between the two organizations. I guess when we talk about the Bengals, we go back to the cost of living uh, sure. argument, right? Sure. Um, well, and I think another thing that's important to realize, and if, if, we, if you've been in this community too long, you do kind of look at Cincinnati versus Northern Kentucky, but when companies are looking from the outside to come in here, they don't think about that at all, do they? They think about being in the region and where is the best spot in the region, regardless of what state it's in. Yeah, with, with, without a doubt. So you have to think about, if you go all the way to the end of the client's decision-making process, our best case scenario would be for them to be considering a, a Northern Kentucky location and a Southwest Ohio location. I think it's football, I can't use that. So you think about a sports, um, think about a, a sports comparison you're a conference, the best case scenario would be if both of your teams are playing for the conference championship. Right. Either way, your community wins. So as a part of the Cincinnati metropolitan area, that's a fantastic thing. The reality of it is we might compete closely like that at, 
on maybe a dozen deals per year. Mm. So out of a total of how many with contacts? So several hundred. So maybe, Ready hundred. might work on I'm I'm just guessing eighty to a hundred deals a year, mm -hmm. and we'll work on fifty to sixty deals per year. Mm -hmm. And so out of that, maybe what twenty percent mm -hmm. there'd be some kind of real true competition between the sites. Mm -hmm. And so I don't put a lot of worry into where a minority of our effort goes. Yeah, I've heard the analogy that um, in those times of competition, you'd rather have it in Northern Kentucky, but if it's the case of you'd rather have it somewhere else, you obviously want it in our region if you can't have it in Northern Kentucky. With, without a doubt. You have right. to understand that, that our clients are often making investments around the world, deciding where to put their capital, where to put their investment. And you know, more than anything else, we need them to land inside the Cincinnati metropolitan area. We want them in Northern Kentucky when that's the right spot for them. But if not here, absolutely in, in the metropolitan area. Right. And speaking of landing, let's talk about CVG sure. and our airport. The massive impact and the changes that Candace McGraw has made there in the last 10 years in particular. Talk about our airport and how it contributes to your work. Well, the, the airport, you know, a lot of communities have airports. So to have an airport is really nothing to brag about. But to have one that is as unique as what CVG is, from both an infrastructure perspective, and when you think about infrastructure, the fact that they have the runway layout that they have, the length of runways, the number of runways, the quality of the runways provides a really unique asset that they've been able to market, and we hope to be able to market for them, so that companies like Atlas and DHL and Amazon Prime Air can select and know that they've got good infrastructure to work from is hugely important for us. So. Uh, CVG, truly a, a unique asset in our community. And then, of course, business travel and how that's mm -hmm. changed and evolved. We used to be one of the worst places to fly out of in terms of cost and inconvenience, and that's totally been turned on its head, which has to be helpful for corporate executives inside these companies we're courting to our region. It is. I saw uh, two surveys last week. One talked about airfares, so we're now in, I think, the the top 10 or 15% of cost effective um, airports in the in the country and then the other the other uh, survey that I saw blended in both parking cost of a cup of coffee cost mm -hmm. of amenities cost of a ticket and again CVG one of the most cost effective airports in the, in the country mm -hmm. in addition to incentives what else does triad triad help with in terms of uh, companies locating or expanding here, talking about incentives on the statewide and local level, uh, competing with surrounding states, et cetera. So, in, you know, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Incentives get a lot of press, and people are always interested in what goes to a company. The incentives are almost always the last piece of the equation for a client. And I say that to, to, to say, how do we help clients? Again, they're trying to make a very complicated decision on where to invest their, their company's dollars. And that typically starts with, I need a place. Mm -hmm. I need a building, I need a piece of land, I need that kind of uh, you know, physical spot where I can grow my business. Our clients today then almost always quickly pivot to the workforce question. Mm -hmm. And we all know how tight workforce is, not just in Northern Kentucky, not just the Cincinnati Metro, but really good skilled workforces in short demand around the world. And so they want to know, can I find a place that I can get into quickly that serves my needs? Can I find the workforce uh, that I can know will be dependable over time? And then you're, you have a whole series of intangibles. Is the community business friendly? Mm -hmm. Can I get permitted? permitted? Mm -hmm. Do I have the infrastructure that I need in roads and power and things of that nature? And then once all of those are in place, then comes the question about incentives. And it's, it's often said in, in our industry, but if those earlier pieces are not there, no amount of, no amount of incentives can pave over a, you know, a missing piece. It's almost like the analogy of buying a car that you get very cheaply, but it's the wrong car for you, or a house, or something like that. So as you said, that's why incentives come last a lot of times when companies are considering where to go, although they can tip the balance sometimes, I guess. So. There's no doubt. I, I'm, right. a, I'm a sweets person, so to me they're the icing on the cake, but you yeah. have to have the cake underneath to, uh, to be iced. Yeah, yeah. Um, you touched on workforce. Um, this is often a, a, a difficult yet critical part of the equation. And sometimes it seems like we never make enough uh, improvements in workforce. We have all these jobs that go unfilled. Um, what kind of hope can you give us in that area and talk about how we're making progress in this 
difficult issue that we face? Well, the, the good news is our community is aware of this challenge. Mm -hmm. All and, and, and let me back up. All communities are challenged with this, right. and nobody has figured out how to provide all the workforce that every company needs. But our community is aware of it, and through initiatives like Grow. Uh, the Chamber, the Regional Alliance, Northern Kentucky Triad, mm -hmm. CVG, St. Elizabeth are all weighing in to, to help make an, to make an impact there. You know, we have some unique challenges in our community. We have an incredibly high labor participation rate, mm -hmm. um, and so we have to start thinking about where can we get that next piece of workforce? How can we get people who aren't in the workforce today back into the workforce? Mm -hmm. Whether that means people who have uh, low-level offenses that we can work to get into jobs, whether it's people that have been out of the workforce for a variety of reasons into the, back into their jobs. And it also means, you know, just absolute population growth of the community. We've got to be welcoming and opening to new people being able to move into the community to help build out the workforce. And you talked about the Northern Kentucky Regional Alliance. Can you talk a little bit about the one NKY concept? And it, it involves a lot more than building a, a new home in Covington for the uh, eight leading regional growth organizations in Northern Kentucky. Yeah, so take a, let's take a step back and talk right. about who the Regional Alliance is. Right. So the Regional Alliance is a, is a group of community leaders, and it could be everybody from folks at Corporex or Duke or St. Elizabeth's or uh, other private sector organizations who have come together to say, we want to take on big issues and big challenges for this community. And what, they, what I believe they saw was there were just gaps in what the, initial, what the existing organizations could provide. So this group called Regional Alliance comes together to address initiatives. And one of them that they've noticed right off the bat was our brand, our identity. How do people know and recognize this? And so when we say we want to go to Frankfurt and lobby for the dollars that we need to build roads and infrastructure, how do they know us? And the problem that we have there is you ask people to say, give me one color that represents all of northern Kentucky. Give me one iconic image that represents all of northern Kentucky. People struggle to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And so the Regional Alliance has helped to lead building a brand called One NKY to help start bringing that together. Um, some of their initial initiatives are a One NKY facility in Frankfurt, and I, it's probably not adequate to speak for Karen's initiatives, but mm -hmm. you know, to give Northern Kentucky a physical place in Frankfurt so that Frankfurt knows we're here and Frankfurt knows that we matter. Uh, is really important. And then the other is to build a, a building in Covington called the One NKY building. Uh, if you want to, the proposal for that would be that it sits uh, across from the Ascent, right behind the Gruff restaurant. A little plug for the Gruff there, really? I like, like that place. Um, and it would be, a, as you mentioned, Pat, it would be where we bring all of the growth organizations together, the CVB, the Chamber of Commerce, South Bank, Horizon, Catalytic Funds, the Regional Alliance, so that we can collaborate, so that we can partner, but it also gives us a unique asset that we can bring clients to the community and show them this is where NKY does business. Uh, really excited and hope that we can, can get that done. And then just quickly, anything else you'd like to add in summation? Well, I, I, think, uh, I think I'd like to share that after uh, 27 years of not living in the state of Kentucky, as of uh, Friday the 8th of November, I am officially a Kentucky resident again. <laughs> after uh, you know, six months on the job, I've finally been able to move back to Covington, uh, living in downtown across from uh, the old, Northern, uh, the old uh, Kenton County Administration building. So I'm ex really excited to have my feet back in Kentucky. Well, Lee, we're on behalf of me and this program and everybody in Northern Kentucky, we're glad to have you here. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, and thank you for joining us today. Always glad to do it. Yeah. Uh, that's all the time we have today. Our guest on Getting Down to Business has been Lee Kroom the, of the uh, Tri-County Economic Development Corporation, or Triad. Uh, we want to thank TVNK for partnering with the Covington Business Council in producing this program. Don't forget to check, check out the latest CBC events and activities on our website, www.cbcky.com. My name is Pat Frew, Executive Director of the CBC. Thanks for watching Getting Down to Business.